So if you're like me, you love looking at these beautiful magazines and seeing these fabulous kitchen makeovers where they're painting kitchen cabinetry. And you see it on the TV all the time and you think, oh, I'd love to know how to do that or can I really do that? Or gee, would I have to hire someone to do that? So I'm here to tell you, yes, you can do it. Yes, it's very affordable. And no, you don't have to hire someone to do it. Your cabinets can stay in place. You don't have to have extra a garage or a place to pull your cabinet doors off and do all this. It can be done in place. I'm here to tell you, I've done it. I've got beautiful results. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I did it. And I'm using Rethunk Junk Resin Paint. It's made by a manufacturer here in the United States. It's a fabulous paint line. There are over 36 colors, so you're gonna find your paint color that you need and um, it's available. So uh, join me and I will show you step-by-step step how to do this. And there's no sanding. Okay, so you're ready to paint your cabinets. Let me just go over the list of things that, uh, that I like to have on hand. And there are some that are mandatory if you wanna paint your cabinets. And there's some that kind of just, you know, it depends on, on how you like to work. So this is what I use. First thing you're gonna to need to do is to be able to remove your hardware. So I always have a screwdriver, or if you have just a battery powered um, screwdriver, this is great to make fast work of removing your hardware. The next thing I like to have is um, frog tape or uh, painter's tape or something, because I wanna make sure that I'm taping off my flooring to protect it. And if I have uh, cabinets that are butting up against a wall or in a bit against an appliance or something like that, you want to be able to tape off. The other thing you're going to need um, it has to do with the cleaning. Now, this is a mandatory. You're going to need Rethunk Junk, the prep. This is a spray. This is our cleaner. This is what's preventing you from having to get the sander out and sand these things. This is an important step. Please do not skip this step and take your time and do a good job. This is laying the foundation for the success of your project, okay? Now, what I have in addition to my prep is I go to the dollar store or someplace inexpensive and buy these little trigger spray. And I'll show you in a little while while I do that. So this has got the prep in it and I'll show you why in a minute. The other thing you're going to need, this goes along with the cleaning process, is if you're doing kitchen cabinetry or bathroom cabinetry, I want you to get these scrubby pads. This is not a lot of money. Your uh, Rethunk Junk vendors have them. And what they are um, will help you knock off any of the grease or, or just food gunk that's in your uh, kitchen. And if you're doing your bathroom vanity, you know, there's hairspray, there's just, just any number of products that can be gunking up on your um, cabinetry which will affect the adhesion of your paint. So make sure that you use this. I also like to have rags on hand, just soft rags. This, this just happens to be a terry cloth. And so you're gonna want that. Now, not necessary, but something I like to have on hand are one of these little razor blades. And the reason why is, and I'll show you in a little bit, but I use that to pop off the little um, bumpers that are on your cabinets because this is the time to replace those bumpers. Um, in addition to the bumper, there's gonna be a little paper backing to it, and you wanna make sure that you get that off. You might be able to pop the bumper off with your fingernail, but you're not gonna get this little paper backing, and that's where this comes in hand. It makes quick work of popping that off and getting that, getting that uh, out of your way. Now, time to paint. So, what do you need to paint with? Well, you obviously need your Rethunk Junk paint. I'm using True Gray, so pick your favorite color, and you're going to need this. Now, I will put uh, in the link how much paint I use uh, for my project, and I will give you the formula of how, how to figure out how much paint you're gonna need for your project. So, get your paint. 
The other thing you're gonna to wanna to pick up is Tough Top. Uh, Tough Top is our satin finish sealant. This is the last step that you'll do to protect your, your beautiful, beautiful cabinets, and I'll be talking about that as I do this video. The other thing you're gonna to want to do is get a uh, nice brush. This is a well-used one. This is a um, Wooster shortcut. Uh, it's very soft bristles. It's in good shape. Um, you don't want to use an old ratty brush because your brush will affect your uh, finish on your cabinetry. So make sure you've got a nice brush. And if your brushes are old, this might be a good time to pick up a new one. And again, I carry this in my booth and I think most rethump junk vendors uh, carry a good brush as well. The other thing, if you can find it, a few of us uh, vendors have this as well. This is called a miracle brush. It's a tapered brush. A little gunk on the end of that one. I use it. Um, this thing is great for getting in, particularly I've got a groove in my cabinets in the framing. This really helps get into that picture framing mold, into those grooves, and has just sped up the process so much for me. Not much money, get a lot of bang for this. Now, you can just use the brush to paint for your kitchen cabinets, or you can roll. If you're going to roll, then I recommend that you get yourself a quarter inch nap cabinet grade um, roller. You do not want a foam roller. You want one of these soft, soft textured, uh, not textured, but soft um, roller and uh, get yourself a little bale for it. And while you're at it, pick up a, a tray. And what you'll do is you'll pour your paint in here, work a little bit at a time, and you'll get a nice result. Now, the other thing I like to have is a little artist brush. Now, why do I want that? Because I'm leaving my doors on, and this enables me to get in there and get my, um, my hinges, which are on the inside, get around that and, and paint and, and have a pretty decent outcome. And last but not least, I also like to have a little water bottle. This is, um, I don't carry this, I don't think many vendors do, if at all. Uh, I bought this one at Hobby Lobby. And the reason why I like it, it's an ultra fine Mr. Sprayer. This is just water. You see that? Oh, just got all over my camera. Anyway, this aids um if if your paint is getting a little too thick or you're just you're you're having some stroke marks or something that you don't like it just flows the paint it's water's cheap and uh, it just really helps to have it on hand sometimes i will just mist my brush and just do that way okay time to get started so to start with, I am protecting my floors. I'm first doing this by using uh, painter's tape. I just happen to use the frog tape that I have available, the delicate surface. Um, and I've taped off uh, a pretty wide band right here at my baseboard and my floor. And the reason why is I'm going to be painting my baseboard, uh, this shoe molding in addition to my, my uh, kicks plate here underneath my cabinet. So this is all one continuous color. Um, and I want to protect my floors, not only from paint because I'm a messy painter, but also this first step we're going to be doing, uh, which will be cleaning the cabinetry. I don't want anything to, to harm my, my new floors. So the first step will be using the Rethunk Junk Prep. Um, the prep is our um, cleaner and it prepares the surface without harming it, prepares it so you'll have good adhesion uh, when you go to paint. This is uh, low, to, uh, low odor um, and uh, non-toxic. Now we're going to clean. What I would recommend doing, particularly if you're doing a lot of surface, is go to the dollar store, your local little El Cheapo store, get yourself one of these spray bottles. Take your prep, and put it in this bottle. And the reason why, this is a great system for when you're doing small pieces. It's a, it's a trigger system and that's fine. But if you're like me, if you have any arthritis or your hands tend to give out early, 
you're going to want to invest in this because now I've got this trigger spray. So what I will be doing is I'll be using my scrubby pad in this and I'm going to spray. And this is another reason why I'm protecting my floors because it's actually running down. And anything this comes in contact will, with will, um, when you wipe it, um, actually change the, uh, uh, the finish. So you wanna make sure that you're protecting your, your piece, your, your flooring. Okay, so, so on there, it's starting to drip a little bit. I wanna just kinda of catch some of the drips and let it sit for just a few seconds. And now I'm just going in there and scrubbing. And it just took all that food that I had on there right off. Now, word of warning, like I said, this will change the, t the uh, finish. So you do not want to use this for cleaning anything that you don't plan on painting or staining. So now I'm taking my soft rag here. I'm using my nails, I'm kind of getting into this relief here, this trim. And I'm just wiping it down. Now, if this were just an ordinary piece of furniture, that might be all the cleaning you need to do. But let's be realistic. It's a kitchen. There's all kinds of food and airborne grease and that lands who knows where. So to be safe and give myself a really good outcome, I want to just go ahead and take this extra step and I'm gonna just repeat what I just did. Let's see if I can give you some idea of the difference between the two. It's really hard to show, but this just feels clean. This I can still, I can actually just feel just yucky texture on there. So just make sure that your piece is nice and clean. Now you will also want to make sure that you're getting uh, your facing here behind the, the drawer and all around there. has been sprayed two or three times depending on the area and I have wiped them dry. They are dry. I've double checked that and now I'm ready to paint. So now for the fun part. So grab your paint and you want to shake it really well. Make sure the lid's on. Shake it really well. Get it all mixed up. It's important. And we're going to um, pour some in your um, tray. Now, if you're going to paint with your brush, you don't need to do that step. You can just paint directly out of your, uh, your jar. But I'm gonna be rolling, so I'm gonna be doing a little both, actually. Um, I have a long-haired dog that lives with me, Charlie. And I have to always check and make sure that he's not leaving any Charlie fur anywhere, so I'm, I'm checking for that. Pouring a little paint in my pan. Now I want to just pour enough that um, that I can work with for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I don't want my paint to start drying out. And um, you should be wiping your lid before you put your, uh, wiping your um, jar before you put your lid on because it gets really hard, but I digress. All right, so I'm checking. I have a fresh, clean, lint-free, dog-free, Roller, I have my brush ready. Again, I'm checking it to make sure it's good. I have this other brush, the Miracle Taper brush, and I have my little artist brush when I get back here to these cabinets. So let's roll. Okay, real life. I totally forgot to clean down here. Clean this. Pointy brush, load it up. Yes, 
I do want it to stick out later, but right now I don't. So now I'm going to take my roller, load it up. Not too much. This is such a pretty gray, y'all. I hope it, I hope it translates well on your device so you can actually see the color. This is true gray. We have several grays in the paint line. So if true gray is not your gray, there's got to be a gray for you. Um, all right, see, I'm doing what I shouldn't do. I'm getting picky and I'm trying to clean. Just, just done. Just make sure you uh, don't have any drips and move on. about going around the hinges uh, with a little artist brush, a little bit of paint, and uh, it's relatively simple. I like an artist brush that has, that's stiff and has a bit of an angled tip to it. That gives you the ability to kind of get in there um, and basically cut, cut into all the nooks and crannies and I just smooth out the paint you don't want to have like a ridge of paint avoid it On the home stretch for this uh, first coat and uh, just going to go over how to do a cabinet door with you I'm starting with my miracle brush and this again would only be necessary and you know you could use a regular brush paint brush with this but I find it easy but this is if you have any sort of uh, relief any uh, framing that um, like a picture frame just makes it easier to get the paint into that crevice than with uh, a roller or um, a regular paintbrush. You could do it with a regular paintbrush. It just would take a little bit more effort. And you can see how quickly this is moving for me. Very, very, very quickly. Just getting my paint out of my hand that I use for my roller. Okay. And putting that up, grab my trusty roller, loading it up. Doesn't matter where you start, just cover everything and make sure again, that you don't have any drips. So once I, whoops, once I finish with this, I'm going to um, take a break. Although if I were in a hurry, the drawers that I did over here are actually um, dry. So I could go ahead and do my second coat, but I need to uh, take a break, get something to drink, answer some text and then I'll be back to do my second coat.
there you go. Okay, it's only been about 20 minutes and as you can see this uh, first coat is dry and it is perfectly acceptable to go ahead and put on your second coat to that point. And that's what I'm going to start doing. So I've painted, it's dry, I'm ready to seal and be done. So I'm going to be using Rethunk Junk's Tough Top, which is a nice satin finish. And I'm going to be using uh, this plastic container. And I'm going to be using just a little bit of my True Gray that I've been painting my cabinets with. And the reason why is that twofold, really. Um, I think it gives a nice finish coat to have a little bit of that color mixed in with the uh, sealant. And also, if the sealant does pool a little bit in, in like the ridges here, it as, as it ages in time, it should not yellow, but um, the, the gray that's incorporated, that I'm going to be incorporating in with the sealant, will help kind of ensure that I won't have any of that um, that yellow ghosting. So um, I'm gonna be doing this with a brush, actually, good quality brush, but here we go. I'm going to take my tough top, I'm gonna pour it into my container. And I already had some already mixed up from my previous cabinet banks, but I needed more. I'm taking my spoon, let me lower this just a little bit. There we go. So that has my Tough top in it. I'm going to take a little bit of paint on my spoon, probably that much, and I'm just going to incorporate that into my tough top. Just want to hold this up to show you that I'm leaving these stacked to let them dry and I, you really should start with the top drawer i was just doing it down here because that's where my camera was but you should if you've got a bank of drawers like this start at the top and then go down and this way you're not dripping on the previous drawer and uh, you just get a better outcome that way you can obviously pull it out when you're um, working on it but then push it back All right, I'm about to do my second and last coat of um, sealant, and I just want to give you a quick tip. This is something you may or may not want to try. I have a uh, terry cloth staining sponge that I have damp. It's not wringing wet at all, it's just damp. And I'm going to take my mixture that we did before, and I'm going to use my brush, and I'm gonna brush my sealant, paint combination on, just like I did before. And again, this is the, the last coat. And let me get this on real quick for you. I'm not being skimpy, but I'm not like, you know, drenching it either. Just getting a good, good amount of tough top on there. I'm not overworking it. Putting my brush down, and now I'm gonna take this. See this edge? There's no seam to it. That's the edge I'm gonna use. And I'm going to see if I can do this going this way. At like a 45 degree angle, I'm just gonna carefully, gently, light touch, drag it across the surface. I'm not wiping it off. I'm just trying to get rid of those strokes this brush strokes and I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna put my hardware on and then this kitchen is good to go.